In this video I'm going to show the new version 1.2 of A2D image. Let's start by creating an A2D image object. As you can see the plugin has created a 2D plane. And if I select an image with alpha channel we'll see that the plugin is applying the correct material. And also is showing a preview of the selected image in the parameters rollout. Below this preview we have 6 buttons and with them we can select different files from the same folder of the current image. With this button I can select the next file, with this one I can select the previous file. With this ones I can select 10 files forward in the folder or 10 files backwards in the folder. With last button I can select the last file in the folder. And with first button I can select the first file in the folder. Using the next two parameters we can change the height of the image plane. And the width of the plane. As you can see when I'm changing the width, the height parameter does not change. But if I change the height, the width is changing proportionally. The next parameter flip image allow us to flip the image horizontally, based on our scene requirements. With the next checkbox we can control the auto offset function for this image. When we turn this option off we can manually set the offset of the image plane. At any point we can turn this parameter back on, and the plugin will calculate the correct offset based on the alpha channel of the image. Moving on to advanced parameters rollout. Here we can set the scale of the image, for example I can scale the image plane two times. And my plane will be two times bigger but my height parameter will stay the same. This could be useful if we are working in a scene with different system units. And we don't want to change our default height and width parameters. Otherwise we recommend to leave this value to 1. Next parameter allows us to force the height to a certain value. For example I can force the height of this object to 100 and if I select different image for this object. We'll see that the height of the object stays the same as the specified value. If I disable this option and change the image again, we will see that the plugin read the height from the file name. In this example, our file name ends with the number 165 and this is the exact number set as height for the object. Also if the file does not end with a number the plugin will set the height of the object to the default height value. Even if the force height checkbox is not selected. Moving on to the material parameters, here we can select different material types based on the renderer that we are using. For example, I can select V-Ray material or any of the other options. If I select a material that is not supported in the current system, the selection will not be accepted and automatically this option will be set to the default material. With the next parameters we can specify the RGB level of the bitmap textures of the material and the multiplier of the material if it's supported by the selected type. For the standard material I can only set the RGB level of the bitmap texture. And for materials like V-Ray material there is also an option to set the multiplier of the light or self-illumination. Here I can set this value to 10 and check the result. As we can see our image is too bright and by setting back the multiplier to 1. And rendering the scene again we can see that our image looks as it should. With next material option we can disable the bitmap filtering and improve the render speed when having a lot of A2D image objects. The last material option is for reusing scene materials. With this option enabled, the plugin will use the same material from other scene objects, if the other is using the same image file. This could be useful if we have hundreds of A2D image objects and we want to optimize our renders. Otherwise for a small number of A2D image objects, we don't need to enable this option. Moving on to viewport parameters. When don't render preview options is selected, and we change our image file we are not going to see a preview in the parameter rollout. This is useful if we are working with big files and generating a preview takes a lot of time. Otherwise you can leave this option off to see the preview both in the viewport and in the parameters rollout. With next option we can rotate the image plane to the current view in the viewport. As we can see our image plane is rotating while we are changing our point of view.
The next option overwrite rotate to camera at object level and sets a global option for all objects in the scene. As we can see here, all three objects are rotating to the camera. By disabling this option we can again control this parameter for each object. With the last button in this rollout we can set a default start up parameters for the plugin. By pressing this button, all current parameters from this object will be saved and loaded next time when I start 3ds Max. If I want to delete the start up defaults, I have to hold alt key on the keyboard and press the same button. In this window I can confirm that I want to delete save default parameters. Moving on to shadow parameters rollout. Here we can specify the shadow for the current object. We recommend to use plain shadows for images of trees and use shell shadows for images of people. I'll turn on shell shadow for the current object and I'll render a preview. As we can see our sun is coming from the right. And even though our 2D image plane is barely visible from that side, we are receiving a shadow from the object. I'll select the same shadow type for the next object. If I select shell shadow for this tree. And render a preview again. We'll see that the shadow is not very natural. The best solution for this is to use a planes shadow. If I render now a preview, we'll see that we we get a better result. But we can improve it rotating the plane's shadow to the light source. I will quickly show the lights and pick the sun as a target for the shadow. Let's render a preview and see the result. With this parameters the plugin is generated a new mesh with vertical and horizontal planes that is facing the sun. In the pro version you can control the vertical and horizontal number of the planes and in the free version these numbers are fixed. It's the same for the shell shadow. With the pro version you can control the height and width resolution of the shell shadow but in the free version this parameters cannot be changed. The parameters in the next rollout are also only available with the pro version. Here we can apply a color multiply to the bitmap texture of the current object material. And see the result. With next option, we can generate a preview for materials that are not shown correctly or are not supported in the viewport. When this option is turned on, we'll have a standard material for the viewport. And a different material for our renders, based on the selected options in advanced parameters. With the color selector on the right, we can further adjust the preview based on our preferences. With optimize group of settings we can optimize the shadow generation process. By selecting fast shadow calculation option. We can resize the image to 128 pixels or any other value that we specify and then generate the shadows. With fast shadow cache option we can store the shadow mesh information with the object and not generate it on each render. We recommend to leave this option always on. Moving on the pro tools rollout. Here we have set of tools that can help when working with a lot of objects or certain tasks. With the first tool we can select multiple A2D image objects and modify any of objects parameters at the same time. For example I can change the height of this two objects even though they are not instances of each other. Next pro tool, export images to folder, can be used to resize files used for A2D image objects and add their height to the new file name. We can also randomize the objects in the scene with randomize tool. For example I can select the height and width parameters and randomize these parameters for all or the selected A2D image objects in the scene.
With camera override tool we can pick different camera or camera positions for our animations. With next tool we can relink the image files for our objects if we are working on a new system or if the location of our files has been changed. Scatter tool allow us to use images from a folder and create a 2D image objects based on the position helpers objects found in the scene. The last tool converts selected a 2D image objects to 3ds max native editable mesh objects. In the process we can convert the material to a different type. To demonstrate this tool, I'll select the tree and convert selected object. We can see that now we have the geometry for the plane's shadow as editable mesh. And our image plane is also editable mesh. This could be useful if we want to send our files to a render farm or machine where we can not install this plugin. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel to be notified when we have new product or new updates for our existing tools.